Day 285. Today there was a series of huge explosions on Russian airfields, one of them very close to Moscow. Some speculate that the Russians suffered double digits losses of jets, and later we will see that this estimate is quite reasonable. What makes the situation for the Russians even worse is that it happened a few hours before they wanted to conduct yet another massive missile strike on Ukrainian infrastructure. Many sources say that judging by the record high number of jets on the airfields, the Russians were planning to make the biggest missile strike and cause a complete shutdown of the Ukrainian energy system for a week, if not more. However, it seems like the damage done by the explosions was so substantial that after they still carried out the rest of the plan, it became clear that this was one of the weakest attacks we have seen. Today the Russians fired around 70 cruise missiles. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported that Ukrainian air defense managed to shoot down more than 60 of those rockets. The footage of how the Ukrainian air force works is already circulating on the internet, showing how the Ukrainians shot down a cruise missile from a German self-propelled anti-aircraft gun Cheetah, better known as Gepard. Most of the rockets were launched from Crimea and the Rostov region. The latest reports suggest that around 10 rockets were launched from 222 M3 long-range bombers from Crimea, around 20 caliber cruise missiles were launched from the ships of the Black Sea Fleet, and around 40 rockets were launched from 8 to 95 MS strategic aircraft from the Caspian Sea and an airfield in Volgodonsk. In its neighboring region, Volgograd, the Russians also have an airfield, which the Russians were intensely preparing for this missile strike. The satellite footage shows that prior to the explosions, the Russians gradually collected around 30 aircraft on this base. The same concerns the second airfield in Diaghileva. The press secretary for Putin told Putin during the call that it looked like it was sabotage. They sent a huge wave of discontent through the media because it suggested that the Ukrainians were operating more than 600 kilometers behind the front line. And not only did they get so deep into the region, but they also managed to get onto the airfields of strategic importance, because these airfields are used by the carriers of nuclear weapons. They're obviously not standing there under the sun with nuclear warheads under their wings, so there was no risk of nuclear explosions. But it just exposes how bad Russian security measures are. But later it turned out that it was not sabotage, it was something worse. Russian Ministry of Defense reported that Ukrainian armed forces managed to conduct this attack by only using drones. So the drones managed to fly more than 600 kilometers without being detected and target strategic Russian airfields with carriers of nuclear weapons. The Ukrainians reportedly used the jet drones to 143 Strish and proved that they were able to attack objects in the deep rear, far behind the front line. Some Russian media sources slapped the defense ministry by noting that ideally, Russian forces should be protecting such objects. Some of them made a reminder that bombers 295 MS are not produced in Russia at all and that construction of just one to 160 takes several years. With the loss of such bombers, it will simply not be possible to compensate. It was reported that three Russian soldiers were killed and four wounded and taken to hospitals. So far there is no information regarding the damage to the bombers, However, depending on how many drones were launched, the losses can be substantial. Over the last two weeks, some analysts estimated that judging by the concentration of bombers on the airfields, the Russians were planning to launch up to 150 rockets. However, today they launched only 70, so 80 rockets less. According to the Ukrainian general staff, some rocket carriers launched up to 5 rockets, so rough estimates indicate that the Russians might have lost around 16 bombers. The number can be lower if they did not use them after explosions for security reasons, because the tarmac might have been damaged or the bombers required inspection before they could be used again. Overall, Ukrainian intelligence and air force did a phenomenal job today and managed to shut down two strategic Russian airfields only two hours before the planned launch of the missile strike. As a result, the Russians used up their rockets, did not manage to overload air defense and caused mild damage to the Ukrainian infrastructure. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, 
but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next report.